just tell her stop. Tractor people have got a tractor for you. Go, 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 go. Hey, Walt. Hi, Ed. I was watching. How you doing with your big D-21? Why, Ed, with these seven bottoms and my D-21, I can turn over 40 acres a day. Those crows are worn out trying to keep up with me. It's the smartest move I ever made. But you know that from the new series D-17 you just got. Yeah, I guess we both got a right to crow a little, huh, Walt? Alice Chalmers, tractor people, and got a tractor for you.
Oh, we're uh, by my 7050 here at the Orange Spectacular, and I am with Jim, Jim B, and uh, he's got a much cooler piece of Alice Chalmers equipment just over there. So we're going to ask him some questions about his uh, Alice Chalmers tractor lineage. Well, a uh, uh, fun fact about Jim, uh, he's uh, one of the first people that actually reached out to me as a fan of the JNL videos, so there's that. So this is why he's on camera today. It's all his fault. No, no. I would have known. Yeah, yeah. No, this is his 8070, and uh, how long you had this, Jim? I think I bought it in 1992. All right. What'd you guys use it for then? Uh, at that time, it was. We bought it in the fall. Went on the stock chopper right away, and then it planted, ran the planter for a lot of years, grain cart. Uh, then it rolled for quite a while after we updated other tractors. Okay. And in the last 10 years, it does almost nothing. Hmm. That's kind of depressing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it looks really nice. You, uh, you did some painting on here? Yeah, just a little touch-up that got carried away, I guess. Okay. So yeah, the frame, and it uh, looks like you might have done the rims. Well, just the part, spot you're supposed to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, so you guys have a, uh, what other tractors do you guys have in your collection? Well, we got a 220, 190, 185, D17 Series 2, WD45, okay. WD, and a CA, and a WC. All right. Seems like I'm missing something, but I think that's it. Okay. For orange. Yeah. All right. So, uh, one. One cool thing on uh, Jim's 8070 here is you can see the uh, tracking numbers from the West Dallas factory when it was built. And uh, Jan was here to explain to Jim what that was all about. So. Yeah, it was kind of interesting to know. That's why I didn't change it, put a new one on there until we <laughs> came up here. So yeah, it's pretty sweet. We're here at Jim's uh, 220, and uh, it's my dad's. Oh, Jim's dad's 220. <laughs> that sat for 30 years while the rear end was tore apart. The uh, what else do you have to do to it to get it like? Well, after sitting that long, you know, all the fuel system had to come apart, get cleaned up, started over. It was overhauled about a year before the rear end went out, so the motor was good, just the fuel system was not. Okay. And then instead of putting it the cab back on, we got some used fenders and put the skirts on oh, okay. to leave it open station. More, yeah. of, a, more, <laughs> more of a toy nice. now than... <laughs> Actual use? Yep. I saw you uh, had a dyno it today. Yep. What did, uh, what did it dyno Today it was only 175. It's been as high as 180. Okay. So it's pretty healthy. Yeah. It's out of good on there. Yep. <clears throat> And this is one my dad bought brand new too, okay, 1972. So it's a, wow, it's a, a heirloom tractor, I yep. guess you'd say. Yep. Number one dealer? Yeah. Uh, this one was Kabista implement in Wasika. The D17 was new, but at that time it was Kuiper implement before Kabista took it over. Okay. And, and dad worked there at that dealer too for a while. Okay. Mechanic and painter. Wow. So this is your son's son's 185. Yeah. Okay. So when did he acquire this? Oh, uh, I think three springs ago. Okay. So we actually use this one quite a bit for hand. Okay. Where'd you uh, find this one? Uh, he bought it from a guy down by Winona. Okay. Uh, he bought it out of Indiana, but originally I believe it came out of Wisconsin from a, the original dealer. Oh, okay. Owner. So we don't know a whole lot of history on it. And took a little bit of this and that to get it going good, but hmm. works good for what we use it for now. Yeah. The paint's still relatively shiny. Yeah, not too bad. It buffed out pretty decent. <laughs> Someday we'll get a new paint so we can put a new sticker on it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the the uh, the D17 then that's yep. sat for? Yep, this is cool. another one Dad bought brand new. This is the one from Kuiper Implement, where he worked. Okay. 
Yeah. It was split in half, the back half sat outside the whole time, the front half was scattered around. Oh, okay. So what was uh, what made you guys decide to split it? Uh, the clutch went out. Okay. And then apparently there was a little knock in the engine, which Dad wanted to figure out. And it took a while. Oh, okay. But yeah, I think I think everybody has projects like that. Yep. That happen. Life gets in the way, I think. So yeah, yeah. Kind of all works. Time, life, money, all of it. Yeah. It's good looking now. So then this next one here is your. Uh, do you want to own this one since new or is this No, one? this is one Dad bought, I can't remember, it's got to be at least 10 years ago. He always wanted a 45 and the local dealer had a used one there. Okay. Um, it wasn't quite this nice, but it ran good, it was in pretty good mechanical shape. Okay. It's a little touching up on it here and there. And, yep, we have a, uh, I think it's a 39 WD at home that my grandpa bought brand new. We've never brought it up here, maybe one of these years we will. Okay, yeah, that'd be pretty cool to see. The, uh, so what'd you guys use this one for, that one? Uh, well, we used it to rake a lot. Um, augers all the time, you know, just one of them handy little tractors for about anything around the yard. Yeah. But now it doesn't get used a whole lot either. So. Oh, yeah. They, uh, it's kind of natural progression, I think, yeah. <laughs> for farm stuff. Yep. And then your uh, your uh, WC. Yeah, that was uh, used to haul milk, and there was a guy down by Mapleton, Minnesota, that had this down there. They were still using it, and I said, "Well, if you ever want to sell that, I'd like to, you know, a chance at it." And about the time they quit milking, um, he said, well, "I'll sell you that." But you got to take that Massey 44 with it. <laughs> so I came home with two. But you know, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. It it was pretty rough, but hmm. got all pretty much all rebuilt. Everything torn down to nothing and built back up. Wow. So it doesn't do much either. Yeah. But yeah. The uh, so you got it from a, a dairy farmer, then? Yep. What he all use it for? Everything. His dad traded a oil pull in on it, I don't remember the number. Okay. And bought this, it originally had steel wheels in the back. Okay. And the rubber in the front, and when they got bad, they cut the lugs off and welded a rim on, and they rusted out from fluid, and they found these at a uh, salvage yard, the okay. back wheels. Okay. So, they're not the original back wheels, but I think the round spokes are, I think those are appropriate for the age. Okay. 36. Wow. And our 190 isn't here either because that's being repaired right now. Okay. That's one my dad bought brand new too. What the what the year round cab? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Series yeah. one. For, yep. XT. I think we might have pictures or video of that from previous years. Oh, it could be. It's usually up here. Oh, the. Do you uh, you're, uh, you were saying that one of your uh, relatives had a uh, RC? My grandpa, yeah, my grandpa on my mom's side bought an RC brand new. Okay. And dad always wanted that someday, but it never really worked out. So maybe someday we'll find one. Well, thanks for giving us the tour of your uh, collection you brought with. And uh, thanks for reaching out to us at the show to talk to us. It was, it's nice to meet fans from the channel. Yeah. And, uh, Glad to talk to you. You're always, you're always full of good information. Well, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go that far. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I was glad to see a lot of stuff here this year. I'm glad there's a lot of people still enthused about orange. Yeah. Yeah. We we try to do our part. Yep. I do hear from uh, some fans that talk to us about, like from far away. There's a guy from uh, Nebraska this year who came up to me and thanked me for, or thanked us for putting on. The uh, orange spectacular videos, otherwise they wouldn't even know it existed. Oh, right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Jim. Yep. Like your shirt. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yours is nice too. <laughs>
by me in the wintertime, I can go to a shore every time. Factory of the Farmer. When final assembly is completed, these machines stand ready to harvest any crop of grain in any part of the world. Now I got 30 more payments. That's all. That's all. Perfect. I can see the end of the tunnel. <laughs>
tracker four, tracker five, maybe tracker six, and maybe tracker eight. Needs a little load, like some tires. Lower deck situation. Well, the lower deck is on there, but it's got more. Okay. My name is Jan Jockham and I, this is my friend Dennis Butke who worked on the semi line in West Ellis. Hello, my name is Dennis Butke <laughs> and I worked on the line in August of 74 I started. I was probably about 26 years old and I had never done anything yet, done anything like that before and the very first day I was there I, I had to clean the grills, which was probably nothing. I was, it was just something to keep me busy. And the next day I went on the line to uh, do an assembly job. So how did you get hired? Was it like Jan, you just heard they were hiring and walked in? No, this was, this was a funny situation. My dad died late August of 74, and I didn't like milk and cows. And my neighbor suggested a man that had worked down there well over 30 years and he gave them my name and I went in and they wanted me right away and I says you gotta wait two weeks I have the cows they gave me gave me about a, a week and a half and I sold the whole herd to a, uh, a fella and I was on the line and I was there almost seven and a half years so I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> <laughs> so what were some of your jobs on the line? Well, I had the uh, 7580 and 7080 air cleaners that mounted to the grill on the front of the tractors. And I had uh, a little table that I could assemble it on. And I counted the pieces. It was well over 60 pieces. And I could put that together in less, a little over six minutes, so. You said you put decals on the tractors too, huh? Yes, I put them on all the 7,000s, and I, I had the 70, well, the, uh, what is it, uh, 185, 175, and 200, and they were split. You had to put the one side on first, and then the number 
on the front and you had to line them up you, you had to be pretty good with it and it was all kind of like a little soap and you'd soap the tractor and then you'd put the decal on and then you'd have a squeegee and it'd just put it on real nice. Now everybody nowadays, you know, when they're restoring a tractor goes through, you know, so much care to make sure they're exactly lined up right in that. Did you guys go through that much effort? Uh, no, not really. We just no. did it by eyesight. <laughs> you get Mostly. used to it. You just knew yeah. what part of your body to, that it's lining up with. And yeah. then you look at the front, front to make sure it's level in the tractor, everything. You line up the front and then and it was just in the right spot. It was yeah. too low to get, you know, you look at the gap. And it was, that's how we did it. We just, at the yeah. you just did it without With thinking. the front hood, you just lined up. If that was square, you just made sure it wasn't too high or too low, like on the 7,000. And if you can get it on without getting bubbles in it or, you know, the, it, if, it, if it was wrong, you, you wouldn't be on doing it very, much, very long. No, once and you used the squeegee, it was on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was on there good and tight. <laughs> so what were some of your other jobs on the line? Well, I had uh, well, put the batteries in, and then I had the, uh, there was a rock guard, like that 7045 that's sitting over there. There's a rock guard that goes underneath to protect the bottom of the tractor. So I'd had to loose, loosely put it under there, and then I had the step, there's a brand new step there that came, came that was bigger, it was kind of like a diamond. And then there's a bar that, that was with rubber and it fastened underneath the tractor. I had to put that all together. So I, I had to kind of be a, a little bit mobile to get under there and <laughs> get that under there. And then the main thing is make sure you can do it. Do it without the holes getting caught underneath the dolly. Yeah. The air holes. Uh. Yeah. All everything was put together with air guns, <laughs> and uh, you, you didn't want to get past your station, otherwise the air gun, the hose wouldn't reach. <laughs> and then people get hostile too. Yeah. You're in somebody else's zone. <laughs> you know. This tractor here, I had the job of putting on the decal, and then I had the job of prepping the the grill and both fenders and the hood. And up here, there's like a rubber, rubber disc. I had to put that in for Mary. And then I'd have to put all these cap screws in. And it was a different decal for this. It was kind of like a square one. I had that job. And there's like clips. There's like clips that hold these cap screws in. I had to put them in, tighten them up. <coughs> and then in here, I had this job. There's a little, little, uh, like little, uh, device that holds the fender tight right here I had that adjustment plus I had to uh, set the injector there in the end and then this step here I would put on I had to carry it one day one day I carried it wrong and the thing twisted in my hand it took a chunk out of my finger really I really and I never said anything to anybody I just took a handkerchief and wrapped it that was all right and then under here, there's a bar that fastens, fastens underneath there. I had to put that on. And then there's a rock guard under there. I had that, I had that to put on underneath. There's probably about six bolts that went under there. So, oh, and then they wanted me to put, there was a grommet here. There's a little different one here, but I had to put this in and then seal it. But uh, what happened with that is I would seal it and then I'd get great big blisters. I was allergic to the silicone and I had, remember the repairman, Jen, that was on the, on the repair floor? Joe Nenick was his name. He helped me do that because uh, I had like three or four big, big blisters on my hand that just was taking the skin right off. So I had to, I had to stop doing that. <laughs> That's about it on this one. But it was, it was a nice job. Yeah, they're nice, nice yeah. looking tractors. Yeah, and then there's a panel up here that uh, I had for a while. They had to, I had to glue a piece of foam on that panel, and then there was a couple of foam blocks I had to I had to put in there just for I think just for vibration. I think it was for uh, I did that, so I had to climb climb up in the tractor a lot. Yeah, good thing I was young. <laughs> I was I was young. I could do it. I couldn't do that now. But uh, 
I know I was just down just down to Racine, Wisconsin, and I see Case IH is hiring. And I told my brother-in-law, I says, if I was 20, 26 years old, I'd go and apply. I'd go down there and see if they'd take me on. <laughs> they were looking for help, Case IH in Racine.
you guys think of a 8070? Yeah, it's a little bit better than a 7050. supporting the show. Um, we try so hard to keep this show free, uh, free entry, free parking. We want everything here to be great for everyone. So your support of us of buying our raffle tickets goes a long way. And last night we had our scholarship auction where we um, were able to award six scholarships to uh, guys that want or guys and gals going on to school and and we're so proud of that in, in giving back to the community. So here we go, okay. First prize, the tractor or $4,000 cash goes to Denver Safgren from Randall, Minnesota. Denver. Say. See you next year at the 33rd annual Orange Spectacular. 
think that was a successful Orange Spectacular. I'd like to thank everybody who reached out to us this year. It's nice talking with you guys. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dennis and Jan for making a trip out here because it was a pretty decent drive for them. And I'd like to thank them for sharing their assembly line stories with us. That was fun to hear. Um, I'd like to thank, thank Jim for letting us hook his 8070 to my field cultivator and taking a few trips through the field with that. That was pretty fun. And uh, we, uh, we saw a few fellow YouTubers out here. We saw uh, Jacob Swanson and uh, Iowa Country Girl was here with her father. And, and um, we also saw Swatch 253 was here. We talked to them for a while. So that was pretty cool. So we'd like to thank y'all for watching the video and reaching out to us. And hope to see y'all next year. Good job. Want a cookie? Sure. Wow. It's even an Alice Chalmers cookie. Check that out. Wow. Cheers to a successful year. How do you get a cookie? Because. <laughs> Dried out. <laughs> <laughs>